إن الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن ولا وبعض فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أيها الأخوة الكرام وأخوات والسيدات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, my dear brothers, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it's okay. Alhamdulillah, it's okay. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, this is uh, this is just a khatira, uh, like a wa'ad, uh, just a, a, a quick reminder uh, to prepare us uh, for the obligation that is upon us the observation of the blessed month of Ramadan. Because you know everything is scheduled. So we had fit things within the, the schedule. So this is a talk, this was a, a virtual talk that I delivered last Ramadan to about 2,000 people while I was in, um, what you call it when you, when you quarantined. So I did not have the COVID, but I was self-quarantined. And so I was in an apartment uh, with my great-grandson. And we were fasting together and praying together and I couldn't go to the masjid because the masjids were closed. So, because we had access to technology, my daughter set it up where I could deliver this lecture and we had at one time 2,000 and at another time close to 5,000 people. But I was in a room and they were where they were at. And strangely enough, I came to find out that most of the people who were online, they were from Nigeria. 
it's like ajabat, we call it in Arabic. That here I am in Arlington, Virginia, in the United States, in quarantine. Because of a set of circumstances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent into the world. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودُ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا So I'm going to do a mukhtasar of this talk because the talk really was like around two hours. So I got to do this here in like 20 minutes. So I want you to just be patient and most of what I'm saying, you have bits and pieces of it scattered about in your life or in your mind, uh, in your studies. Um, and many of you, uh, you may be more qualified to deliver this kind of wa'av than myself. It is not, I'm a, I'm a visitor. And because of being a visitor, uh, I've been afforded a special responsibility and a distinction, and I'm grateful for that. So you heard the ayat which the Sheikh he recited. This is from Surah Al Baqarah, the 183rd to the 185th verse. And while the topic that was broadly given to me was the virtues of Ramadan, I selected one virtue. And that virtue is one that's overlooked. That Ramadan is a month of power. In it, it has the night of power. But it is a month of power because coming into it and going out of it, there is power, concentration, focus, discipline, tremendous concentrated barakah. Promises from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who engage. Those who are able to engage and for those who are unable to engage the prescription, even Allah still blessed them and he gave them a way by which they could make it up. So this is a month in which the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Wasallam. This is power. It is also a month where the Quran was completed. Many people don't know that. The Quran was revealed in Ramadan. It was completed in Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. If there's one thing we want to connect with Ramadan, it is not just a month of fasting, that's a commemoration that we do. But this is the month of the Quran. So reading the Quran, listening to the Quran, memorizing the Quran, these are all preferred exercises in this month. Now fasting has rules and conditions. Fasting is a discipline. Fasting is a prescription. And fasting is a science. So when non-Muslims ask me, so why do you guys have to fast all those many days? Why God don't just tell you to fast one day? Because science is not acquired in a day. Secondly, a prescription that you get from the doctor is not for the day. And a discipline that you learn for your life is not learned in a day. So in your religion, I tell them, you are unfortunate that you're not observing this here. But if you want the benefits of this, even if you don't become a Muslim, better for you to be with some Muslims during this month. And our Prophet وسلم, he said, Man Sama Ramadan Imanan Wahtisaban Ghafirullahu Lahu Ma Taqaddam Min Dhambih. La ilaha illallah. O Kama Qabr Rasulullah. So let's translate that. The Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with sincere faith. Wahtisaban and observing the disciplines, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them, him or her. Whatever sins, ma taqaddam, 
من ذنبه. So he will forgive them the sins which they had performed, and he will also seal off sins that they will do. The Prophet ﷺ said, and I'm going to repeat it, whoever fasts during this month and spends their nights in prayer out of faith and hoping for the reward from Allah, he or she will emerge, that is they will become purified from their sins as the day they were, they were born from their mother. SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Fasting is a shield. It will protect you from the hellfire and prevent you from performing sins. This is all power. Having said all of this, now let us see and understand the maqasid, the objective, the social outcome and the results of fasting. Fasting will improve your health. So even a, a silly person, even a pagan, an ignorant person, even somebody that doesn't like Islam but they got bad health, you should tell them, be with the Muslims during this month. You're going to still get some benefit. You know, this reminds me of a very long hadith in the Arba'in Ahadith of Imam Nawawi. You know this hadith is the longest one in which the angels is talking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they said, Oh Allah, your servant, he asked for this. And Allah said, they said, they, 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 Allah asked them, what they asking? He said, they asking for your mercy. He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, do they know my mercy? He said, no. He said, well, give it to them. They asked for your forgiveness. Allah said, do they know my forgiveness? He said, give it to them. You know the hadith. Very long hadith. And at the end, the malaika said, oh Allah, there's one of your servants. He's with those people, but he ain't even really sitting with them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, give it to him too. Because I will not preclude someone who is sitting with my servants to get the reward that I gave them. SubhanAllah, look at that. See how merciful Allah is. See how generous Allah is. That the person who was sitting, maybe he wasn't paying attention. Maybe he was sleeping. Maybe he wasn't of the, of the proper iman. Whatever the case was, Allah is so merciful, Allah is so generous, and that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave what he offered to the others, all the things that was mentioned, he said give it to them too. So we know that even if a non-believer who don't have no wudu, no kalima, no nothing, he just want to come and sit with us. Should you tell him, no, you can't do that? No, let him come sit down. Because he's going to get some kind of reward. He ain't going to get the same reward, but he's going to get something. But if it's a believer, but maybe that believer is lazy. Maybe that believer doesn't have the discipline. Maybe that believer doesn't have Iman and they're not observing the proper prescriptions. We shouldn't blame them. What should we say to them? Just come on. Because at the end of the day, the reward is not ours. The reward is coming from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting will improve your health. Most of the people here who are eating around three pounds of food every day. And by the way, for every pound of food that you eat, it takes the body approximately 12 hours to digest. So if you're eating three pounds of food, you really need about three days to digest that because you're a mammal. We're, we're mammals. When a whale swallows something the size of a human being, it takes that, that whale around five days to digest that. But the people who just keep eating and keep eating and keep eating, 
they don't realize that the stomach just keeps growing and growing and growing because the body is not digesting it properly. I'm not saying nothing about nobody's weight, so don't be getting, you know. Fasting will improve your health, your eyesight, your skin. Fasting, you know, simply will help to control your blood pressure. Fasting will help you control your temper. Fasting will help, you know, so many things that, that affect your health. Fasting. Why? Because the Prophet said, the stomach is the mother of all diseases. Fasting will strengthen your thinking. Because when you're fasting, you're thinking more focused. And you're saying, subhanAllah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla, wa la quwwata illa billahi alladheem. You're saying, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa habibina Muhammad rasulullah. You know, you're saying so many different things because in Ramadan, you're controlling your talking. In Ramadan, you're controlling your eyes. In Ramadan, you know, you're looking at the clock, you're checking. You know, you're thinking about, you reading Quran. So in that month, even your thinking becomes stronger. In Ramadan, you will improve your family relationships because sometimes in Ramadan, you are reminded because of the disciplines of Ramadan to break the fast and eat the food with the, with the family. And some members of the family will come together and go to the masjid and make tarawih. So Ramadan also strengthens family relationships. Ramadan will add a shine to your face. Ramadan will bring humility to your demeanor. Ramadan will make you more grateful. Ramadan will give you greater discipline. Ramadan will increase your iman. Ramadan will increase your knowledge. And Ramadan will grant you mercy, forgiveness, and protection from the hellfire. This is all power. These 10 and much more assets equal a state of acquisition. So Ramadan is a month of powerful, multiple, compounded acquisition, a state of endowment, and the opportunity to become more empowered. This is Ramadan. Now some people are thinking negative about, and I was talking about the fact that we can't go to the masjid. That was last year. You know, we couldn't go to masjids in the year before that. We couldn't go to the masjids. So people are thinking negative. And it's not negative. This happened because Allah wanted this to happen. Allah put the whole world, the whole arrogant world in sajda. And all those who had hatred for the hijab, for the niqab, Allah, he put niqab on the whole world. See, you ain't had no, no kafirs talking about niqab since the Allah sent the COVID because everybody doing niqab. So my brothers and my sisters, don't allow negative people, negative thinking, negative messages to stay with you. Clean out your inbox from all this conspiracy theories and things about victimization and, you know, the COVID and where it came from and different people who are conspiring to try to wipe out populations. And there's just some crazy, stupid, devilish, uh, they call it suedvan. No, this came from Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more so than anything else, He spared the Muslims. We suffered the less. Statistically, we, especially Africa. You know the bad things that people be thinking about Africa? Africa was the continent that was spared, that was affected the least from COVID. Did you know that? Yes. Say subhanAllah. So don't allow the negative thinking of other people to make you a victim. No, let the blessings and the ni'mah 
of this Ramadan make you grateful? Yes, this is a great test for us. But the test is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So Ramadan is nothing but concentrated blessing and concentrated power. Ramadan is a month of self-assessment, self-improvement, family organization and alignment, focusing on community responsibility and building relationships. Ramadan is a month where leaders become more conscious. With those who are humanitarians, they give out more sadaqah. Ramadan is a month where the hearts open and the pockets open. The doors of the Jannah open and the doors of the hellfire are closed. During this month, think outside the box of your own personal interests. Think about your neighbor your colleague, your co-worker, the community that you live in. Give food, give water, get rid of some of the clothes that you have. Go to your closets. All of you that's got like 20 or 30 of these hats, keep five and give the rest away to people who ain't got no money to wear these hats. Those people who got nice stoves, clothes, 30, 40 of these different colors you can wear for every day of the month. This month, cut that in half and find some people that's out there that you know they can't even afford that. You see how they dress? Give it to them as a gift. And don't just give it to them balled up. No, take it to the laundry and press it and put it in that plastic and go to one of these people out here and just give it to them. During this month, come to the masjid for yourself. You need it. The imam doesn't need to be followed. Allah, he don't need to be worshiped. You need the discipline. You need the reward. So think about your own self-improvement during this month. Those of us who have parents that are living, be grateful for your parents and tell them more this month than at any other time how much you love them, appreciate them, and ask them to forgive you for words that you have said or behaviors that you have done because this is the month to be earning, asking for mercy, forgiveness, and freedom from the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Think about diversity. Africa and India are two continents that combined is like one third of humanity. And the diversity between Africa and India is more so than any place in the world. Diversity in language, ethnicity, tribes, cultures, languages, so think about the diversity, the ta'arafu. And in this month, be tolerant with other people's diversity. And don't always be thinking about your interests, your people, how you think, how you feel, your persuasion, what scholar you following, and so forth and so on. No, think about the diversity of the human beings and how blessed we are have been selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be Muslims. During this month, we should be grateful for the government. We don't have to agree with all the policies of the government, but we should be grateful that we have government because government means organized, organized policies and authority and resources. This is what government means. Because think about it, in many places around the world, governments have been totally destroyed. And in some cases, it wasn't destroyed because somebody invaded the country, it was destroyed because the people inside the country, they destroyed the country themselves. 
We have a government, a sophisticated government. We may not agree, there may be lots of arguments. Yes, there is corruption because inna insana li rabbihi lakanu. You know, Allah, he called the human being jahula. But we have to be grateful that we have an organized, synchronized government. So that we can go to sleep at night. And even though we got problems and challenges, we can go to sleep at night and know that a government is thinking about the interests of its people. And we should tell our president, whatever side of the aisle you're on, whatever your opinions are, you should pray for your president every night. Pray for his health, his well-being, his security, and the governors, and his ministers, and all the spiritual leaders, and all the responsible people, all the way down to the principals inside the schools, and this is all government. Thank Allah for the people who govern. Because this is one of the ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he sent down into the earth's authority to regulate the behavior of people. For if there was no authority, you people here in my dugari understand it more than anybody else. If there was no authority, some people of facade, they would have destroyed the whole area. May Allah bury their ashes. Having said that, my brothers and sisters in Islam, what's the time, Chef? Okay, I got five minutes? Good. So what I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, is that uh, I've been here now for, I think, three and a half days. Tomorrow, we will be moving to Abuja, the capital meeting with some other good influential people. This is, my, this is my 13th visit to Nigeria, but my first visit to my Duguri. And I'm not trying to gas you up. Now the OGs, they may not know what that means. But the young guys, girls, you know what being gassed up means. That means exaggerated praise. So that's not what I'm doing. I'm being straight, I'm being clear, I'm being sincere, and I'm being humble and grateful. I wish I had been to my Duguri before. And I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that anytime I come to Nigeria, make sure I come here and spend at least a week. Because there's a unique spirit of reception, vision, and to be honest, as a person coming from the outside, I don't even see the traces of the trauma that you have been through. You know, if you go to different places in the Muslim world who have suffered insurrection, you will see it everywhere. But for some reason, Allah, he healed the place quickly. You don't even see the insurrection on the faces of the people. This is his ni'mah. You have to be grateful. And it's because Allah blessed you with a person like your governor, the honorable governor. As I have read his background, his profile, his portfolio. He's one of the best of the best. And as I have read the portfolio and understand the expansive responsibility of the person whom you call the Shihu. His name is Sheikh Abu Bakr. May Allah bless him and give him long life. 
to fulfill this tremendous responsibility of keeping people regulated and keeping them inspired and keeping them disciplined and keeping them reminded you know of this tradition of Islam and there's one special person also in that mix Professor Professor Dikwa, is that his name? Doctor. An unusual human being. I didn't meet him yet. But it's like one in 10,000 human beings who have capacity, but they keep the faucet open all the time. Most people who have capacity, they turn it off and turn it on. They turn it off and turn it on. But you know, there's a word in the Quran or something the Prophet calls muhsinin. You know? In wa ahsinu in Allah yuhibbul muhsinin. You know the definition of muhsinin here? It is a person who has a love for giving that he doesn't even worry about how much he's spending. Because he has a connection with Allah that he knows that as he's spending, Allah is replacing. Most people don't have that in their consciousness. We ask Allah to give all of them long life and allow us to be grateful and to cause the vision of these three gifts to Bono State and to Maiduguri, these three gifts to flourish. And if I want to use an analogy or there was a country that I had the chance to visit for two days, Rwanda. I visited Rwanda right after their insurrection. The whole world know about that, right? I had the chance to visit Rwanda three years ago. It's like a totally different country. And I told you that Rwanda is the first African country that made their own phone. Now it's not an iPhone. It's not that sophisticated, but they made their own phone using technology that they patented. This should tell us that any one of us can do that. And now Rwanda is one of the per capita, one of the most sophisticated, safe, beautiful, cultivated countries in East Africa. Is that correct? So imagine if we follow the collective vision that Allah has given to us, what can happen here in Maiduguri? May Allah bless the young people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their mothers and fathers, their parents. May Allah bless all the OGs. Y'all know the OGs? Huh? The old generation. In America, we call them old gangsters. <laughs> May Allah bless them because they suffered and took small things and made it into big things. We say subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa nashadu an la ilaha illa ant wa nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear brothers, you know I know these phones prompt us to uh, be taken like pictures, right? But there's a jinn in the phone. This technology, there's jinn in the phone. You got to keep the jinn under control because you will waste a lot of time, make a lot of effort, and it's not even the sunnah to be taking these pictures. I didn't say don't do it, but it's not a sunnah. Allah gave us the eyes already as the cameras, it's more powerful than this one. So look at me and remember, don't be saying, oh, shake, let me get, oh, shake, let me get. No, don't do it. Let's just bow out and we see you another time. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh, shake, you have to translate? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Oh, I thought we only had five minutes. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, up to ten minutes. Uh,